that the camera on? Yeah, it is. Hi guys, <laughs> this is so weird. Welcome to another YouTube video. I have my little baby monitor here because my first baby is asleep and my second baby is a nursery. We're gonna get comfy today because I'm gonna do a get to know me video, first one ever. I've asked you guys on my Instagram stories if there's anything you would want me to cover and you've asked me loads of questions so we're gonna dig into them. Also, you cannot see, George is actually here. I stole this chair from Ray's bedroom by the way. I know I'm in the kitchen. I'm always in the kitchen because the lighting is just so good here. Anyway, I don't know if this is too booby. Is it too booby? I've kind of underestimated the sizing because obviously I'm only two months postpartum. So hopefully I'm not flashing of anybody. I think before I do the main questions, I think I'm just going to cover like the basics. So my name's Estella. I'm 27. I'm actually turning 28 on the 24th of August. And that's a very special day to me because my first baby, Remy, was actually born on that day. And then I've got another baby girl called Romy Roo. Remy will be three, like I said, on my birthday her birthday and Romy will be three months old on the 11th of August which is absolutely crazy. We live in Scotland. I was actually born in Poland. My parents moved here when I was a little girl so I've done primary school here, secondary school here and all my education, all my jobs, blah blah blah. It's all been here so Scotland feels like home. People always ask me do you think in Polish or do you think in English and I think in English for sure. I speak in Polish to my parents but okay we won't go into this because there are some questions about my background and stuff so I'm just gonna get into it now. Maybe I should mention that I've been with the same guy for the last like 13 years and yeah girl still has no ring but he's got until I'm 50 I've told him that. There's actually so many right I haven't actually read them um but let's go with this one since we're speaking about Matty already. So how did you meet Matty? How did you and Matty meet? Same question. Um so me and Matty we actually met at school so I was 14 and he was 15 but he used to always message me on Facebook and I was really shy at school so I never replied to him because I didn't know who he was. I, I was scared. Boy, I have no idea who you are. And then one day I had to hand in money to the PE teacher for like skiing or something and he was standing outside and it was a boys only like class for doing their hires or something. So it was mainly boys that did them back then. Yeah, that evening he messaged me saying that he was the guy in the red t-shirt and I was like, I can't remember. I replied to him, so I was like, oh, so he's an actual human, you know, that goes to my school. Um, and then we just got chatting, but for the first like few months, we just didn't speak. Like I would see him at school and I would just like ignore him and so would you. I think we were just like really shy, uh, but yeah, that's how we met. We met at school. I never actually told my parents till like a year after going out. Yeah, he asked me out on the 10th of February, which is so weird by the way, because my mum's house is on the 10th of February street in Poland. And yeah, he asked me out on the 10th of February. And I actually moved to Scotland on his birthday, which is Halloween. So on the 31st of October, that's his birthday, I moved here in like 2004 or I can't remember which is wild like there's so many weird things with dates for me obviously like Remy on my birthday okay sorry we're getting off topic so yeah met Matty at school basically that's it have you always lived in Aberdeen no I obviously lived in Poland I was born in Poland and we also did a year in Australia and then we went traveling um and that was really fun like Australia is just Australia has got my heart and there's so many questions about Australia and I can't take this any further because of yeah I just can't speak about it online I'm sorry and for those that know what's happening sorry that was me trying to wink um oh I love random questions so this one is fruit or veggie person it depends how I'm feeling but I would say I'm more of a fruit person for sure okay how many siblings do you have are you an only child so I actually have two siblings that are here with us and I've got an older brother that I've never met, none of us met him. I think he passed away when he was only six weeks old. Um, so obviously super tough on my mum. My mum was only like 20, which is crazy. She was a baby um, having to deal with all of that. But yes, I've got an older brother and an older sister. So there's 17 years between me and my sister and there's 14 between me and my brother which is wild so technically i'm not an only child but there is a major gap and i would say that i also remember being a kid and feeling like i wanted siblings like close in age my siblings were grown adults and i was still a kid so but it was fun for like free holidays 
they would always like take me out during like summer holidays so it was like really fun and now that we all have children I feel like we're a lot closer I don't see my sister as much because my sister actually stays in Frankfurt in Germany and my brother is here so yeah I've got two siblings that are here and one that's not when did you go full-time with social media do you do social media as a job now? If not, what's your job background? What is your dream job? Do you want to go to uni? What did you study? I'm gonna start here. So after leaving school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I basically left at 16 and I went and worked in a restaurant and I honestly lasted about three months. I lost like three stone. No, that's a lie. I probably lost like a stone, but I was so skinny because I was working like crazy hours i don't think it was even allowed but yeah and i was getting paid like four pound 35 i remember this ever since then i kind of just been working and doing like admin stuff and then i think i was 18 and i was just like you know what i really like numbers i've never really liked writing emails and things like that that was never appealing to me i always preferred like looking at numbers and I liked maths and stuff but admin just wasn't fun for me so I went to college and done HNC accounting which I done part time over two years which was hard because I would work nine to five and then from I think it was like twice per week from seven till nine I would go to college but it taught me a lot I've always been a workaholic so I never just like go home and chill that that's just not me I do like to do that but in terms of like having like a goal and having like a job, I always have to have something. I always have to be working towards something, like always. So yeah, that taught me a lot because I was just like, whoa, like I'm having to, you know, study, work. It was, it was a lot. I passed, I got a good result. And then I think that's when we moved to Australia for a year. So there I just done accounting. I worked in like accountancy firms. But please do not ask me for any financial advice because I am rubbish. I prefer just doing the calculating part, which you use a calculator for. So <laughs> I moved back after traveling and I just done more accounting. I've always just done accounting really. And then I decided to do psychology part time at Open Uni. So I've done that for a year, which I also passed, which was actually so great. Like psychology just blows my mind, honestly. But psychology was also great for me on like a personal level because yeah, it just taught me a lot. So yeah, that was my background. And then social media, honestly, like social media, it's just the craziest story ever. Well, to me anyway, because I've always loved like editing. So I remember before like Instagram blew up, I was one of the first people to like actually get Instagram. Like my friends didn't know what Instagram was. And I remember just like posting pictures, but then I was always that person that was just like, no, I can't do that. Like that's so cringe. Like, no, I can't do that. Always like enjoyed all these like new apps. And I remember TikTok, it was about the time when we moved to Australia because that's when I downloaded the app. And that's why I don't get paid for views because technically TikTok thinks that I'm in Australia and obviously they don't get paid a fund. So yeah, I do this for free. Can you tell that I love this job? I don't know where I was going with this. Always just like love the new apps, but I never actually done anything about them. Like I've always just been like the first one to get it, but then just kind of like not posting because I was like, oh, that's a bit cringe. Like what will people say? What will people think of me? Blah, blah, blah. This is quite sad. So last year my mom was diagnosed with cancer in January and my dad was diagnosed with cancer in February. It was actually on his birthday, which is crazy. Um, and then I went to see my mom. She was in Poland, by the way, because she actually moved during COVID to look after her own mom, who's 90, but her own mom's literally like running around everywhere. Like my grandma's just the boss, honestly. And I was working part-time in finance. I went and seen my mom and things were just so much worse than what she was saying to us over the phone and over like FaceTime and stuff. I actually got to speak to the doctors. Sorry, yeah, that was quite aggressive. And um, yeah, it was just so bad to the point where they were basically saying that like my mum's got days. Crazy story, long story short, I ended up staying there for three months um, and it was tough. Like I was literally there just with Remy and Remy at the time was well under two years old. So it was just, oh God. And when I look back, it honestly just makes me wanna like, yeah, it just like makes me tear up because it was crazy. Like I can't believe we're here. I've got goosebumps, like I've actually got goosebumps. But that's when TikTok started, it became more like a consistent thing. I was posting before, but it wasn't like a, like a real thing. I basically started just sharing like my normal day. So I would just film my day to basically show Matty what we done that day and to show my mom because my mom was 
in the hospital basically the whole entire time. So my little videos made her really happy and that's when it all kind of started. I got back home in like July and I remember being at a wedding and people were saying to me like oh my god like I watch your TikTok, oh my god like I watch your TikTok and I was like no way, like people actually like watch my TikToks, that's funny. And I started posting on Instagram as well in that group. When I met my manager Meg, um, I think I was on like 80k on TikTok and I was on over 100k on Instagram. And we had a phone call and she's just such a nice girl so we signed up and honestly like this was December and my life has completely changed ever since then. I can't even explain to you how grateful I am because this is my main income, my full time job. For our family it's just been life changing. I feel like I'm just getting paid to do my hobby and don't get me wrong like sometimes it is hard because People don't realise what goes into it. Like, I feel like I could do a whole video about social media because people just don't realise how much goes into it. But that's basically how this thing starts. And I'm so proud of myself. I'm that kind of person that's slightly delusional and I'm like, oh, I can do this, I can do this. And, and sometimes, don't get me wrong, that gets me nowhere. But sometimes it gets me places because I've just got this weird... Yeah, I've just got this weird motivation behind me that is slightly delusional that I can do things that... Some people might think it's impossible, but nothing's impossible when you put your mind to it. Sorry, like this is just me vomiting. Like I love to vomit and I'll speak until you tell me to shut up and you can't, so you're just gonna have to listen or just don't watch further. But please do because I need the views. <laughs> I'm joking by the way. Um, right, okay, and this takes me to the next question. What is your biggest goal, dream job? Where do you see yourself in five years time? This is the thing with me. Honestly, see when I'm 80 and I have loads of grandchildren running around me, I have a dining table, a big garden, and Marty by my side. Truly, I will look at that and be like, wow, like this is everything I've ever wanted. And I swear to you, that is like my biggest goal in life. That is all I want. I feel like I've got different categories when it comes to like, goals because that's my like ultimate dream but obviously to get there you need money because if you're gonna have more kids you obviously need to have enough money to look after them and then there's other things like how you're gonna make that money so what's your like work goals and yeah like family goals and I don't know I feel like I've just got so many different ones but I guess in the next five years I would love to be engaged and married if I'm honest I would love to have another baby for example like short-term goals would be to have a dining table, oh, I think that's my baby. To have a dining table in a garden. Honestly, that's like all I want right now. We're in a two bedroom flat. Me and Matty bought this flat when we were just 18. Two seconds, I need to grab her. Okay, we have been joined by the littlest member of the team. We're just having a little feed. And once again, I forgot what I was speaking about. Dining table and a garden. That is honestly, like my short term goal. We are moving next year. Our mortgage is so little. There's just no point of us moving how we're, I'm so sorry, that's really annoying. I never even thought about that. That might be so annoying. But she's just feeling nice. Like she's just having a drink. Even though we've outgrown this flat so much, there's no point of us moving right now because we're saving so much money per month. We've had this mortgage since we were 18. So it's been almost 10 years that we've had this flat, which is crazy because We've barely done anything to it. Yeah, we just much rather spend our money on holidays. So for example, it took us about five years to even get like spotlights put in this. I think the only thing we've done is the kitchen. When I was pregnant, I literally just ripped the whole thing apart. And um, that's like my pregnancy craving, if you didn't know, because with her, I ripped up my carpet in the living room and Matty literally came home to the carpet being lifted. And then to be fair, I did lay head and bone by myself. He just cut the bits basically and I've done it all by myself. So, wedding plans. Whoa, that question just threw me off. Wedding plans. Um, well, to be fair, there would be some if I had a ring on my finger, but I clearly don't. So, no wedding plans, but I'll tell you, fine, I'll tell you. If it was up to me, I would get married on a yacht. That is the current situation that I want. Obviously, Matty's Scottish, so I don't know, would that work with a yacht and a, hmm, and a kilt? I hear they're very heavy and you get really warm in them, so. I would love to rent a yacht, it actually came up on my Instagram one day and it was a yacht in Mallorca, it's like a company that you can rent and like all your family stay on it and you can basically like get married on it and then I thought about like you know like imagine getting married and then like everyone just having a massive party and especially because you're getting married abroad, we will definitely do an abroad wedding I think 
but the older I get I'm like hmm maybe I'd like Scotland is beautiful but I just love the idea of like being outside and like fairy lights when it's like nice and warm and not like 15 degrees you know what I mean so I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. I first need to be engaged, but I would love an abroad wedding. I've actually got a mood board for my wedding on my Pinterest. Okay, favorite style clothes outfits. My favorite style of clothes, I would say it's always been oversized. Even before I was pregnant, I've always like loved oversized clothing. That basically doesn't do anything for my body. I, to be fair, I wear more tight stuff now than I did back then and like back then I look back at pictures and I'm like girl like your body was so well it was unreal compared to what it is now don't get me wrong like my body is fine and I've birthed two children so I feel fine about my body I definitely feel so much better this time around because with Remy I actually struggled massively seeing my body change because it is a lot like you're growing you're growing eyeballs you're growing bones like when I think about stuff like that, it honestly just takes over my mind. So my style the last year, I would say, has just been more just the like comfy. I just love comfy clothes. Like you would, some people would say these are pajamas, but I love them. They're just so comfortable. And yeah, I love just like plain, basic style. I used to wear so much black. Is he okay? He needs a little burp. I think living abroad has definitely changed my style as well because we don't really get summer so I hated summer clothes. I don't like to be uncomfortable in my clothes. Like if I'm not comfortable in my clothes, I just won't wear them. I hope this video is not boring but how do you stay motivated? My biggest motivation is definitely my kids but with social media, I don't know if people mean like motivation when it comes to like social media and posting. Social media is just kind of like therapy for me so that's what it was obviously back then when I started posting. I feel like because of posting my silly videos, now I've got this platform where I'm making a steady income every month. My motivation has kind of obviously changed just to make sure that I'm doing the best as I can but it's also fun for me because I enjoy it so much so like YouTube although it's a next kind of goal motivation yeah finally get paid for views i wouldn't be doing this if i wasn't enjoying it and um, but i guess the motivation is my children the motivation is not money the motivation is me creating a lifestyle for me and my family because everybody likes nice things last year we were basically living off one wage and I didn't like that. I wanted nice things, not expensive things for myself, but I just like when I say things, I mean holidays. So I just wanted to make sure that I was doing the best as I could to get that, but I just love it. I honestly just love it. I don't think I could keep up doing it, especially with two kids if I didn't love it. And I hope this video wasn't boring because I feel like I've literally just sat here breastfed my baby and just spoke about me which is this is quite funny isn't it i've literally just sat here and just like spoken about myself i'm sorry but if you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and yeah i'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.